911, what's the nature of your emergency? Welcome back to the Tactical Living Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Walton, joined by Detective Walton. Clint, how are you? I'm good. You know, it's pretty funny because there, there's so many things that we could record about and so many things that I have filtered on this show because as the show grows and as downloads continue to increase, I'm realizing that there's more and more people listening <laughs> than I ever would have thought before. So today's episode is one of the ones that I had to sit and think on whether or not I even wanted to record. And it's also one that I thought all the more reason to record because of that sense of, of doubt. So today I wanted us to talk a little bit about the Respect for Marriage Act and gender dysphoria. And nobody else is talking about these two in tandem. So that's why I thought it was so important for us to discuss it here on this show. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy today's content. <laughs> I love the look you're giving me right now because you never know what's going to come out of my mouth. But <laughs> again, this is with a, a filtered mind, but also one that I think is important to be candid about. And with regards to the Respect for Marriage Act, who knows if it's going to pass or not? If you're not familiar with what that is, essentially, the federal government is trying to legalize same-sex marriage. So before, it was individual states that would come up with their own laws as to whether or not same-sex couples could get married or not. And now the federal government is trying to make it something that is essentially universal. And, you know, marijuana is a great example of this, too, because it, a lot of people don't understand the way that the Constitution is written with regards to the way that each state holds the power. And that's why you will also see a lot of federal mandates that are contradictory to what a lot of states do. And so with regards to this act and everybody trying to make it something something that it really isn't. And what I'm what I'm going to explain is is this. If you were to ask me three years ago, Ashley, do you believe that people of the same sex should have the legal right to get married? Inequivocally, I would say absolutely. You love who you love and you should be able to marry them. And there should be no other question about that. But the rhetoric came up and people started to see the argument of why this particular act should be passed federally. And I started to realize something so important that nobody was talking about. And it completely changed my mind when it comes to same-sex marriage. Now, I no longer believe that same-sex marriage should exist in the context of this act. And the reason for that is because there is nothing inside of the act that says that if you're a man who's decided that you're a woman and you want to marry somebody of the same gender, then that should be legal. So inadvertently, if there were the passing of this act, then that would mean that me supporting this act is not necessarily supporting same-sex marriage in and of itself. What it's also supporting is us thinking that it's okay to promote and accept this rhetoric of gender dysphoria, which I believe is absolutely disgusting. Now, gender dysphoria means that you were born in a body that is different of your sound mind, sound mind, right? And from the moment you were born, your mind and your genitalia did not align with one another. Now let's take some stats and you don't need to take my word for this. You can look this up for yourself, but there is an estimation that about 0.005% to 0.014% of people assigned male at birth and 0.002 to 0.003 people assigned female at birth are diagnosable with gender dysphoria. Those numbers make it so minute with regards to the number of births per year of people in our nation who were born in the wrong body, essentially. And if you were to look online right now and you were to see what the current ratio is of people Disgusting, disgusting people that are pulling these young children, pulling, P-O-L-L, -L, not P-U-L-L, -L, <laughs> pulling these young children 
and asking them whether or not they believe they're a man or a woman inside of their little adolescent body, I have seen studies that are showing that upwards of 15% of these kids believe, say they believe, that they are in the wrong body and that they really should be assigned a different sex. And nobody's talking about this. And I, I, I couldn't, you know, I'm really nulling myself down as much as I can because I think this is one of the most disgusting things that we're allowing to take place because now it's become a choice, right? It used to be when when we grow, grew up, Clint and I, I remember that being gay was something that we didn't really talk about. And I had a cousin who was gay and it was one of those things. And Clint, you, you also, you have a nephew who was gay. And from very, very young ages, they knew and their whole family knew without it even being a topic of discussion that that person is going to grow up to like another person of the same sex, right? It was, it was something that you were born into, right? Lady Gaga's baby, I was born this way, like comes to my mind right now. But as it became more socially acceptable and socially promoted, which I think is the perfect way to explain it, people started to understand that they can actually choose whether or not they wanted to be gay or not. And the same exact thing is happening with our adolescents when it comes to choosing what gender they believe that they are, which goes against the very the very rule of natural law, which I think is disgusting and why I will never support this act and why my entire mindset has shifted. And that's not to degrade or demean anybody who is in a same-sex relationship. Again, I fully support that. If and only if you are in the same body mindset, you dress the same exact way that you did when you were born compared to now. You know, it's really interesting to me to to see because it's a it's a societal thing. I think with as we grow as a society and we get more and more involved with social media and just media in general, I think you know, kids are approached at a young age and they're polled and, and asking this question. And I think what kind of stems from it as they get older, like they almost brainwash themselves to say this because they like the attention in which they're getting. And it's something in the social media and media realm is you're seeing more and more vocal people come out and celebrities come out and say that they were born as a male but identify as a female and then take the steps to further their their transition. transition. And it's something that it's it's curious to, to me because it seems like we're almost – grooming people to believe this way and you know there is always that 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 chance that this poor person was born with out of that body is male and with a female mind or, or whatever it may be but I think as time goes on and the more and more we progress we're grooming our youth we're grooming ourselves to not only make this okay, but to make it a normal thing to where people appreciate and like the attention. It's almost like a fad in, in some ways. Yeah, I know somebody personally who had five boys, always wanted a female. And on her fifth boy, she essentially like decided that this was going to be a girl. So at a young age, she started buying Barbies and dressing him in dresses. And, you know, I, I can remember playing with boy toys when I was little, but I can't imagine what my father would have said to my mother if my mother started dressing me in boy clothes or started to really encourage me to be of a different gender than that of what I was. And so when you're taught this at a young age, then of course you're going to think that you accept that to be what it's supposed to be as you continue to get older. And I mean, this child, this poor, this is child abuse, plain and simple. And this child, you know, has now gone through genotherapy and is like going through everything that you can imagine at such a raw and vulnerable age. And again, you can look at the stats for yourself, but the statistics of people who 
once believed or were conditioned to believe that they suffered from gender dysphoria and then they saw the light, they, you know, had had that moment of awakening where perhaps they aged and became of a sound mind for themselves for the first time and understood that, wait a second, I'm not, I'm not really this gender that I was thinking that I was. I'm actually the gender that I was born as. And these individuals have such a high rate of suicide that this could very well be the next the next pandemic, the next epidemic, right? Like this is a, a serious, serious issue where we're shifting gears from heart disease and obesity to now we are creating such a psychologically fucked up society and nation and it's it's our own doing so when we think about things like same-sex marriage I hope that what you've gotten from this episode is not that I'm against two people loving each other regardless of what gender they are that's not what this was but the fact that supporting that you might also be inadvertently supporting something that you might completely disagree with and when we don't look at things from all angles like that then we, we miss the mark. And I think a lot of people are missing the mark right now. So I hope you've gotten some value out of today's episode. If you have, do us a favor, drop a review, subscribe down below. And as always, know that I'm sending you a long, tight hug from my home to yours.